Hello, everybody. Last time we were together, we talked about a little pre-White House biography of Ronald Reagan. Okay, But today we're going to talk about the very beginning of his presidency and how the very beginning of his presidency almost turned extremely tragic for President Reagan and the nation. On January 20th, 1981, Ronald Wilson Reagan officially became the president of the United States of America. And he delivered his inaugural address. And by doing so, he delivered these great Reagan-esque terms. And he talked about uh, the things about America that he loved, the phrases and the ideas that would pepper his speeches during his entire time as president and before and after. But Reagan, with this great speaking style that was on full display during his inaugural address, which later came to give him the nickname The Great Communicator because Reagan was a great public speaker, his background as an actor gave him the ability to deliver speeches and allow an audience to be just wrapped up in everything he was saying. But Reagan, this man who went on to become one of the top 10 greatest presidents, according to most historians, he's consistently ranked in the top 10, usually number 10. Reagan was almost a footnote to history because in 1981, March 30th to be exact, Ronald Reagan was leaving a speech at a hotel in Washington, D.C. As he walked to his limousine, there was a young man in the crowd by the name of John Hinckley Jr. John Hinckley Jr. had some mental issues going on and he decided that he was going to kill the president of the United States of America in order to Im impress his favorite actress. As Reagan walked towards his limousine, he waved at the assembled crowd, and John Hinckley Jr. sprayed bullets in the direction of Ronald Reagan. The Secret Service grab Reagan and throw him into the limousine. And as Reagan hits the seat of the limousine, he goes, Ow, I think you guys broke one of my ribs. But initially, the Secret Service, see Reagan's code name, since he liked to ride horses and he had been an actor and stuff, his code name in the Secret Service was Rawhide. The Secret Service sent out the message, Rawhide is fine, no big deal, he's good, and they started heading back towards the White House. At that moment, Reagan takes a handkerchief out of his pocket and starts coughing, and blood starts coming out of the president's mouth. The Secret Service agent immediately directs the motorcade to change their objective from the White House to the hospital. They start feeling around on the president and they find a tiny little hole in his chest where a bullet had entered. Reagan gets to the hospital. He stands up out of the limousine so anybody looking on would not be concerned. And with a lot of courage and grit, Reagan walks into the hospital and collapses. They grab the president and they rush him into surgery to remove the bullet from his chest. And Reagan, at this moment, was still the great communicator. He still had his wonderful sense of humor. And Reagan looked at the doctors and said, wait, is every doctor in this room a Republican? Everybody laughed and said, today, Mr. President, we are all Republicans. Now, they were able to get the bullet out of President Reagan. But Reagan had a long recovery ahead of him. I mean, this was a serious injury that almost took the life of Ronald Reagan. Now, I kind of hesitate to mention this, but it's always brought up every year. Students always want to know about the curse that Tecumseh's brother, that we all know in this local area, we all know a lot about Tecumseh, that the curse that his brother supposedly put upon presidents, starting with William Henry Harrison. And to give you a very brief overview, if you're not familiar with this curse, and again, I don't really believe in curses, but this brief overview was every president elected in a year ending in zero uh, would not make it out of office alive. Well, crazy enough, starting with William Henry Harrison, who had defeated Tecumseh's uh, Confederacy, uh, starting with him all the way through every president until Reagan, who had been elected in a year ending in zero, they had all died in office. Reagan was elected in 1980. Reagan is shot, but he lived, and nothing happened to the presidents elected in years ending in zero after that, you know, which was George W. Bush. So the legend of Reagan grew that he had broke this curse and all that jazz. But in all honesty, let's get back to some actual factual stuff if you want to. Reagan's recovery after getting shot made him a very popular president. See, the Americans poured out sympathy to him. And they loved his humor. They loved the way he led the nation by ignoring his own personal tragedy. So Reagan emerges from this assassination attempt as a president with more political capital than he had before. 
and he will move forward. And he actually, and this is interesting, Reagan was not an overly religious individual before the White House. I mean, he believed in God. He uh, believed in some re religious aspect, attended church sporadically. But Reagan truly believed that God had spared his life after the assassination attempt. He had been spared by God for the specific purpose of defeating the Soviet Union and communism in the Cold War. After the assassination attempt, Reagan is going to dedicate the rest of his life to defeating the evil system of government known as communism. And that's what we'll talk about next time in our Reagan Chronicles. See you later, guys.